time when I came in, um, as Chris just said, I'm up from Salem. And in Salem, um, I was a pretty active Rotarian and visited the Sunrise Club a couple times, but my club was in the afternoon, a lunch club. Um, so I applaud everybody for getting here early in the morning and what a wonderful place to have Rotary. Um, so like I said, um, I'm up from Oregon. I've been here about 15 months now as the CEO of Pierce Transit. And I have um, been committed the last few months to really get out and talk to people and give you a, an update of what's going on at Pierce Transit um, and answer any questions. I have a PowerPoint. I'm very informal. If you have questions as I go, please speak up. There's no, no reason to wait till the end. So with that, you all, can you see over there? Should I kind of like dance up here a little bit so you can? Uh, I always like to start off, um, as you heard, I started as a bus operator many years ago. I won't say how many because then it dates me. But um, so I really like, I just like buses in general and I just find the value of transit in every community I go to. So this picture right here is a 1948 twin coach that our uh, maintenance uh, department restored. This actually um, put over two miles, two million miles um, on in the Tacoma area. So when, uh, before Pierce Transit even began, when it was Tacoma City Bus Company, I think it was called. Um, so we've come a long way since those days. Um, Pierce Transit officially began in 1980 with the beginning of the public uh, transportation benefit area. Um, we connect our riders, of course, to jobs, school, um, errands, medical appointments, anywhere people want to go. Uh, this is our service area. And I can't, I'm just going to go, so I, I'm going to just trust Rebecca. This is Rebecca, my trusty manager of communications. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, this is our service area. Um, we cover from Gig Harbor uh, to JBLM, Northeast Tacoma, Auburn to Puyallup, um, and places in between in all 12 cities and towns and unincorporated Pierce County. We have, inter, um, we have service in about 70% of Pierce County currently. This is our current map. Um, it just shows all of our routes um, and where we go. Uh, in general, it's, it's the most routes and the major service is in the most populated areas, as you can see on the map. We do, we do surveys about once every four years or so to look at our demographics of our riders. Um, and this slide points that out. 61% um, of people who ride Pierce Transit don't have a car. Um, don't. I mean, <laughs> 39%, I'm not looking at my slide, so 39% have no working car, but I always like to turn it upside down and say 61% of people do and choose to use the bus. Um, next slide. So our workforce, um, and I'm going through this kind of quickly. So uh, what people don't know is Pierce Transit is a very large employer in Pierce County. Um, we are up to a little over 950 employees. Um, about 83% of those employees are direct, um, they directly touch the service. So they're either mechanics, bus operators, uh, shelter cleaners, and they're represented by ATU 758. So these are uh, good working uh, family uh, wage earning jobs. Um, and what people also don't know is we have a pretty strong and unique partnership with Sound Transit. Um, we, the buses that go from Tacoma Dome Station up to Seattle, a lot of those Sound Transit Express buses, we operate under contract. It's a great relationship that we're able to do the maintenance um, and we do all the hiring for Sound Transit um, and then contract with them so we're able to share those costs across a couple regions. Uh, it's been, it's really a unique relationship. I've been kind of around the United States a lot. You don't usually see where you have a public agency um, working with another public agency in a contract. So that is really about uh, maybe between 35 and 38 percent of the jobs that we um, provide here in Pierce, Pierce County. So overall, our service by the numbers, um, 36 local fixed routes. Those are those big buses that you see around town. Uh, last year we moved uh, 9 million people and that's just in the local area. All the stats that I provide are not sound transit stats, they're not people that are going uh, regionally. We also provide paratransit. Paratransit are those little shuttle vehicles that you see around town. Those are for folks. It is a um, qualifying service that is mandated by the Federal Transit Administration. If you, if you 
operate a fixed route. Uh, and it is for people who are unable to use the fixed route service because of a disabling condition. Um, that is, we have about 5,700 clients that are registered for that service. And last year, about um, 370,000 boardings. We also have a pretty robust van pool. Uh, and you see our van pools around. We're up to 405 van pools at this point. Um, we are kind of the marriage people. We match people together for the van pools and then provide the van pool and collect the fares for those van pools, whether it's a, from an employer or from the person using the van pool. Um, we also work with about 160 employers throughout Pierce County in, uh, on the van pool program or matching people for uh, car, car sharing uh, or you know, car, uh, car pooling. So I always, when I go to areas such as you know, Tacoma or Puyallup, I like to just highlight what's going on in your area. Um, so here's the Tacoma service, uh, the centric here. We have 50, 31 Tacoma routes. Um, and as I said, because it's the most dense in population, you'll see the most frequency of routes in Tacoma. And we have uh, 67 van pools that either originate or end in Tacoma. All of our van pools actually either originate or end in Pierce County. Again, I'll just kind of talk about the regional connectivity a little bit. Uh, we, we're kind of that vital link between Seattle and, um, and then the link actually between Olympia. We also partner with Inner City a bit on that um, link. But we all know that uh, Highway 5 is becoming worse and worse <laughs> that uh, traveling between. Uh, so we operate, as I said, 13 of the Sound Transit Express buses, including a bus to SeaTac. So if you're going to take um, a plane, it is really a great way to get there. Uh, and you can get it right down at the Tacoma Dome Station. We have uh, six transit centers in Pierce County. We connect with the Sounder light rail, uh, the Sounder, I mean the Sounder train, the light rail, Amtrak bus, ferries, um, kind of anywhere you want to go. And you might have saw in the paper um, maybe six or seven months ago, we did a study at the Tacoma Dome Transit Center. That is really the hub um, <coughs> for not only us, Sound Transit, Amtrak, and Inner City Transit comes in there as well. That's from Olympia. That, those parking garages there, uh, there's two parking garages which we own and maintain. Uh, 2,400 cars park there every day. And um, during the fall and winter, this is not during the summer because of students, those parking spots are filled at 7.30 in the morning. Um, that's, you know, 2,400 cars that are there. And if you are in that area or live in that area, all over the streets around there are also parked where people can park uh, for free throughout the day. So we're really looking at how to maintain that, that parking um, and perhaps some different methods in, um, in whether it's, we're not, we're kind of looking at paid parking a little bit, but we also want to look at a hybrid of that. But at some point, uh, something has to happen at the Tacoma Dome Station because, you know, the growth in this area, as most of us know, it will be really um, quite, quite phenomenal over the next 10 years. And people will continue to use Highway 5, and it will only keep getting worse. And I don't think we can really build our way out of this at this point. And here's something that helps people to use all of the different transit agencies in the area, and it's called Orca. It's a car that you can use. Um, you can load money onto it or a pass for the month and use it on any King County, Kitsap, um, Pierce, Pierce Transit. There's seven different agencies that use this, plus the ferries. Um, and it is a tap card that you use when you get on the vehicle. Um, Orca stands for a one regional card for all. <laughs> it, you know, it's got the Orca wheel on there, so that's what really people think that. But that was the original plan of that. Um, and it, it's just very nice. You can um, tap it and transfer it to different systems. Um, it, it rolled out, I think, about uh, 12, 13 years ago. So now, uh, unfortunately, it's become a little outdated. You can reload it online, but you can't reload it on your smartphone. Uh, so right now, we are um, going out for a vendor, all agencies together, to, to create a new um, kind of smart pass. So how is Pierce Transit funded? Um, most people know the, the bulk of it is sales tax. This is what it looks like. 72% uh, is sales tax. Uh, fares um, are only 13% and many times people ask me about this. Um, in general, um, transit cannot support itself with fares. We would have to charge um, over $6 a ride uh, because at some times of the day you have 30 people on the buses and other times there's two. 
Um, and so in, in, on the average, our ridership in Pierce County is about 25.2, I think, um, customers per hour. Um, and people say, well, I see, I see buses that aren't filled. Absolutely. You will see portions of routes that aren't filled. If you're like at a school or an employer or downtown, it fills up. But as it goes out, it's dropping out off people. So if you see a bus at the end of the line, typically it's, it should be empty <laughs> because it's coming back in. <laughs> so, um, but we do it on an hourly basis. And uh, I don't want to kind of dwell on the past, but we, uh, if you've lived in Tacoma for a while, you know that Pierce Transit um, made several cuts and went out to ballot several times um, to increase that sales tax. We uh, collect 6% and by authority we have 9%. I'm not going around asking anyone for a ballot measure. We will live within our 6% at this point. Um, so our highest sales tax collection year was 77 million and that was in 2007. And then we had a downslide. Um, that has, has come up um, starting last year. We, we saw real growth in this. And in the meantime, we had um, some folks in Pierce County uh, such as DuPont and Bonnie Lake and some other unincorporated areas drop out of the Pierce Transit area. And there's a, there's a method for doing that. And uh, so that even shrunk, you can see that was in two, 20, uh, 2011. So we kind of started going up and then went down. Um, that was because our um, area was shrunk. So as I alluded to a little bit ago, things are looking much better. The future looks pretty bright. Um, our sales tax collections have, have grown, and we are dedicated at Pierce Transit to putting our service back on the road. Uh, we had a cut of staff uh, during the recession of about almost 40% and about that much of our um, service as well. So last year we began that growth in 2015 when we added about 15,000 hours of service, um, 16,000 hours of service, and we call, it, we call it revenue service, so it means the amount of fixed route buses the hours that they're on the road. Um, at our peak, we had 622,000. That shrunk down to about 412. Um, and now we're growing again. So in 15, we added 16,000. And we will continue to grow um, this year and next year. We also were uh, fortunate with the state transportation package in 15 that we received I'm going to make sure I get it right, two, two million for special needs transportation, that's those little shuttle buses that I talked about, and 15 million for a BRT corridor, that's a bus rapid transit corridor, that will run from Spanaway um, down SR7 to Pacific, clear down to downtown Tacoma. Our heavy lift for the next few years is that because of deferred maintenance, um, buses in general um, have a 12-year useful life. That's what the FTA says. Most transit agencies run those buses about 14 years because we maintain them well. Um, our useful life, we moved during the recession to 16 years, and our buses are reaching 17 years right now. So over the next five years, we need to buy 25 buses per year um, you know, at about 750 thousand dollars a bus. So um, we are, you might have saw in the paper recently, we are going for grants and we just received one for some electric buses, which uh, I think is in the presentation now since it just happened. But what we're doing right now is we're doing a comprehensive service analysis. We're just looking at our service. Some of our routes have been out, <coughs> you know, for years and years and years. And uh, population has changed. Uh, employers have changed. Um, Big uh, pockets that need to be moved around have changed, and the economic uh, drivers have changed around Pierce County. So we brought in a consultant along with our own staff, and we are doing an analysis. You can go online to piercetransit.org and weigh in on that. Uh, we are still accepting comments. We have never had as many comments, I don't think, on a project ever, which is very exciting for me. So when our, we brought our website up asking people to respond, we had over 500 comments in the first couple days. Um, we, we are just reaching kind of the end of our outreach. We're doing um, some events around town, and there's, I think, a brochure on, the, um, on, on your table. We only have one more left, and that's in Tacoma on August 11th. So if you'd like to stop by and kind of see what the future looks like. Um, but we don't have maps or anything like that, because what we're doing right now is trying to gather public input. Um, and then we'll work off that um, into our big rollout of service will be in March. 
We'll be adding, just in the next couple months, in September, 15,000 hours of service, a little bit more service on Saturday, um, which we always get asked for, a little bit more service in the evenings. And then after our comprehensive service analysis, in uh, next year, 34,000 hours of service will be added. Um, again, we've put all of our kind of eggs into the service basket. Um, we haven't grown our staff a whole lot except uh, bus operators and mechanics. And if you know any mechanics that are looking for a good uh, gig, send them our way. Um, those are the kind of positions that are getting kind of hard to fill these days. Um, and, and all transit agencies are having trouble with this. You know, community, King County, you might have just read about King County, they're having trouble getting operators as well. We uh, do a lot of outreach on this and we work with JBLM to um, garner folks that are just retiring from the service um, for those positions. We're also looking at the first and last mile connections going back to the Tacoma Dome Station. How do we get folks to the Tacoma Dome Station rather than using their car so then they can get on a coach to go somewhere else or a train? So we have been talking to um, TNCs, which are your Ubers and your, uh, I think, um, Lyft just came back into town. Um, kind of interesting organizations to talk to. Um, they're, they're, by the way, they're not transportation transportation companies. Um, don't call them that. They don't. <laughs> they don't like that. This is a whole licensing thing. So we are. Um, we have just applied for a grant to try to do a little partner with them and see how we can add some alternative solutions to the community on how you get to your your bus. Um, we have a few things, you know, we're doing a special connector in Puyallup to really help that community, those small cities, and also the trolley in Gig Harbor. So I talked a little bit about the bus rapid transit. What bus rapid transit is, it's a bus line. You try to get it out of the traffic into a dedicated lane or kind of a shallow lane like bikes. Um, off, off board um, payment system, typically you, you, you board at a different door. Because the whole thing with buses, and I'm sure people know in this room, one of the roadblocks to taking a bus is it takes too long to get anywhere. And why does it take so long to get places on buses? Because we have to stop um, every <laughs> few blocks to pick people up and then move back into traffic again. So. What we consider, what it's called, you know, in the industry is dwell time. And uh, what we try to do is figure out ways to reduce that dwell time. And bus rapid transit is one of those things that can do that because you're not having people pay on board so that, you know, getting your money out or even tapping your card takes time. And then you make your stops a little further apart, not, not you know, terribly further apart, but a little further apart. And then provide um, kind of connections to that, to park and rides to those stops. Um, I was fortunate that when I was in Eugene, we implemented a bus rapid transit system that went past the U of O and over to um, Springfield. So it's kind of sister cities there. And we met our 20-year uh, ridership within two, year, two years of, um, of putting that system out. And we were able to cut our dwell time. We could load about 85 people on and off of a coach in about 20 seconds. That bus went, you could get through there much quicker than you could in a car, um, even with the stop. So we're looking at that. Uh, we're just doing the feasibility study now for this Pacific um, SR7 corridor. Um, it won't be around for a few years, but we'll kind of phase it in with some maybe um, express buses along there. We are also doing a lot of things out in the community. You've seen us out and about. If you went to the Freedom Fair right down here, uh, we provided free service um, with connect in, in um, cooperation with the Tacoma what, what was Events, Commission. Events Commission. Um, and they kind of bought our, bought our fair box for the day, so we were able to provide free service to everyone. Plus we had, um, I believe we ended up with about 40 buses that left right after the fireworks. We moved over 10,000 people in that one day, probably the biggest 4th of July day we've ever had um, for, for the last few years, of course. And then I alluded a little bit earlier to the electric bus. We applied for um, a grant, no low, from the Federal Transit Administration, and we were one of 20 transit agencies that received this. The funding um, that was requested was three times as much as the, the FTA had, so we feel pretty special and pretty honored to get this um, get this grant. It, what we will do with this is provide the infrastructure for electric buses and begin rolling that out. Right now we are um, CNG, so that's compressed natural gas. The board made that decision um, 
many years ago, and we have natural gas we buy in the future, um, so we get good prices on it. We pump it right into our lot out in Lakewood, and then we compress it right there on site. So uh, at one point, 100, almost 100% 100 of our fleet was CNG, and then you might recall we had a pretty bad fire. Um, the CNG um, generator started on fire, and we had to end up taking our buses to Seattle to fuel them because there was no CNG that we could get here. And that was a good lesson learned there, you know. Do not have your fleet all one propulsion method. So we um, went into the diesel, but diesel really, it, it's, it's on its outs. I mean, we're, you, I don't think that probably in our lifetimes you're gonna see many more diesel buses being um, produced. We are just moving away from that because of the environmental effects of it. Um, right now we have 15% of our fleet is diesel, electric, um, hybrids and then the rest are um, CNG and then we'll be bringing in two to five um, electric buses in the next year. Lastly, um, we are um, of course governed by a board that represents 13 jurisdictions and Pierce County. Um, they represent of course their communities but the whole uh, Pierce County area. We are the board and my staff are um, very committed to bringing our service levels up to what the community needs, but also really looking at different ways to do it. Because <laughs> nobody had a, who, who had a smartphone 10 years ago? Now we're carrying our computer with us. So I think all of us have to look at the future and look at innovative ways to do it. And we all wanna do things quickly um, and in sound bites. So we are um, really looking at how we can provide that transportation because we, we do need to all work together to get some transportation mechanism in place, especially on Highway 5, because um, it's just grown. And I, on your table, our, our latest report to the community, we've been putting that out. You can also get it online uh, just by going to our website. It just kind of gives you a snippet of what we're up to right now. We're also going to be providing service. We haven't for a while to the JBLM Air Show. So I hear, I haven't been here for it, but um, that, there, that it's like 200,000 people come to that air show. And I would suggest that you catch Pierce Transit from one of the parking rides to go there because we get to get in the back gate. <laughs> so you won't be having to get in all that traffic and we'll get you right out of there afterwards because we'll have a lot of buses all lined up and ready to go. Um, so we're really happy to do, be doing this partnership with JBLM and we'll also be doing the Washington State Fair, of course. So, you know, if I could answer any questions, I'd be happy to. I invite everybody to give, give your service a try because it is uh, Pierce Transit in Pierce County. So we're, we are doing everything we can to keep, keep building it too. Yes? So how many buses do you have and where do you get them? Yeah, so we have um, at peak pull, that's how buses are measured. We pull 127 buses of Pierce Transit. And, um, and then of course we have, you know, about 100 of, of Sound Transit. We do a competitive um, RFP, request for proposals. We have Buy America standards because um, of FTA. We usually, we've been running Gillings, which are built in uh, Oakland, California. So we will be doing a competitive bid process soon. In, in the back. How much of your funding comes from Sound Transit? So yeah, our funding, um, what we get from Sound Transit is a contract rate. So we, they pay direct costs for everything that, um, you know, maintenance, operator, fuel, um, infrastructure, they pay for 80% of Tacoma Dome Station and then about a 10% indirect cost. So I would say, you know, on that contract, it's probably, you know, it's hard to say, but maybe 30% of our funding. And, but it is really direct cost. If we didn't have that, if we didn't have the Sound Transit contract, that would just go away. Um, our operating budget for just Pierce Transit is about 103, and with both of us, it's 160. So the initiative that will or will not pass, yeah. <laughs> that's going to be very expensive. Are you concerned that that's going to eliminate the possibility for you to raise funds more locally? Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, um, we do though receive some things out of the Sound Transit 3 and Pierce County in general receives some items. Um, 
out of, uh, out of the ST3. One of the things is the uh, BRT system that I was talking about. We will receive $60 million from ST3 for that. Um, but, you know, I, I say yes, and um, some of my board members have that concern as well. I mean, there's that 10%. I mean, we all, you know, it's like once it gets over that 10%, that's it. So it's, it's kind of an interesting time, I think, because if it's not SD3, it could be something else. I mean, will it go over that 10%? I, so, yes. So um, curiosity on the hybrid electric, uh, what, what is the range on a hybrid electric before you have to uh, refuel? And the same thing uh, with, the, with the full electric, is this the type of bus that connects to an overhead, or is this uh, a fully self-contained battery that you have to charge? And what's the range yeah. on that? Yeah, so the CNG, uh, or no, I'm, I'm sorry, electric hybrid that we have now, they're, they're unlimited because they just, they regen themselves um, from the engine running on diesel. So it's, it, it's high, we don't do anything. They just regen themselves, the batteries. Okay. And it's pro it probably runs on electric maybe a third of the time. It kind of depends on where the bus is going. Um, so the new buses will, they have a 62 mile radius um, and we will have, um, what, what our plan is right now to have at least three charging stations. One will be at base and that's a long charge. So we can do a couple every night. Well, we can do them all every night, but a couple at the same time. And then uh, we will have a transit center such as Commerce Street that we own. Um, and maybe Lakewood that we own um, a charging a quick charge there with about if you charged it at night with a 10 minute charge it can go it can go another 62 miles and it's not a plug-in although we're hearing that that's just right here on the horizon we may see the plug-in uh, right now it looks like a bridge and you pull the bus in and it just kind of comes down on it and recharges, comes up, and off the bus goes. So um, Foothill Transit in California, um, I think are almost 100% electric now. Uh, King County has rolled out a few, and they're going to buy, I think, 200 more in Everett Transit. Um, up in Everett are also buying them. So, yes? Is there any uh, idea of putting additional parking downtown by Freight House Square? No, not really. Um, you know, it, there there isn't really the space. Yeah. Um, you know, it, we could. You know, there's some surface lots there. They're privately owned. So um, no, we're not really looking at adding more parking. We're looking at other alternatives to parking your car there. Really. Um, Is Amtrak going to add anything there with the? So you know, they said they were going to. I'm not sure if that's going to happen. We have 24-7 uh, security in our parking garage and there's no overnight parking and Amtrak knows this. W those garages were built with Federal Transit Administration funds. We're not allowed to lease those. We can do it at special events every once in a while in the evenings when it's not peak time. So we cannot lease those to Amtrak. Amtrak cannot use them. We had a project uh, right down there at TOD Transportation um, kind of pr pr oriented development that um, we are now doing going into a contract with somebody else. But they were going to build, um, I think, 100 apartments right down there, with, and they didn't want to do garage. And so they wanted to lease from us. And you know, I went to FTA and said, come on, I wanted, no. <laughs> no, those garages were built for transit use, whether it's Link Light Rail, Pierce Transit, Sounder Train, and they're not for overnight parking. Because I would love to rent them out for airport <laughs> shuttle. I could make some extra money that way. So. Just one more question. Yeah, uh, the bike racks on buses, uh, are those mostly used by people commuting to work? And uh, I guess is there an additional charge if you bring your bike on a bus? No, there's no additional charge. Uh, the only um, kind of issue with it is there could already be two bikes on there. So it, once they're full, they're full. Uh, um, but a bike is nice. You can get on it and ride it <laughs> to, the next, to the next place that maybe you can catch another bus. Um, no charge. And what was your other question about I, I, it Mostly uh, people commuting to work who use those. Um, work in school. I would say work in school. We have a new bike parking down at the Tacoma Dome Station. Again, trying to get people to use something besides, um, and it's a it's a cage that you get you get a key for, and you can put your bike in there. And there's some lockers to put helmets and that kind of thing in, and it, it's it's kicked off pretty well already. So thank you so much. Um, any if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them afterwards. And go Rotary. I mean, I got.